So this brings me on to the, the first lecture. And I would like to introduce my good friend, Dr. Sabrina Tosi, who is going to talk to you about around the biology and the anatomy of how to make and how we get to having the gametes. These are called the gametes, the egg and the sperm. Okay, so I'm going to leave that to her. She has been with us at Brunel since 2005. She works on leukemias, childhood, in childhood leukemias in particular. And she had her daughter, Alessia, um, in 2007 at the age of 42 years old. She's a great cook. She likes belly dancing and painting. In fact, she came into anatomy through art, which is very interesting. Thank you, Sabrina, for agreeing to speak to us tonight. Well, I need to thank uh, Joe for the nice introduction. And um, I guess it's my turn now. And uh, I have the, oops, I have the, the job to um, start this, um, uh, this uh, lecture series with uh, uh, the definition of fertility. So I went to look it up because I didn't want to get it wrong. Um, people talk about fertility, but what, what is it? It's a very simple definition. So I look at the British dictionary and it said the ability to produce offspring, especially abundantly, um, the state or quality of being fertile. And then the medical definition is not dissimilar. Um, the state of being fertile, especially the ability to produce young, right? So it's a very simple, straightforward de definition, but what does it mean actually in practice, biologically? Um, so I am going to look at the very basic um, uh, concept be uh, behind uh, fertility. So um, I found this uh, poster online uh, from the um, uh, that was um, uh, made for the National Fertility Awareness Week, but it's dated 2016. But I thought it was actually appropriate because um, actually this reminded me that um, uh, my mom used to say, well, when I had you, I was 28 and I was considered an old mother, right? Now things are different. And uh, in fact, I became a mother when I was 42. But uh, actually, it's a myth uh, to say that you don't have to worry uh, about uh, fertility because, you know, until age 35, you are fine. No, actually, the fertility starts decline, declining uh, much earlier than that. Already uh, from age 28, uh, the uh, chance of getting pregnant uh, is declining for a woman. And this is a nice graph that uh, shows um, that uh, actually uh, around age 20, 24, you are at the peak of your fertility and then uh, it, it slowly declines until after 35, uh, age of 35, um, it, it declines quite rapidly. So, um, so it's, um, you know, this makes us think, right? We look younger and younger, you know, with this uh, beauty product, we don't look the age we, are, we really are. But in fact, biologically, our cells are um, aging um, nevertheless. But um, uh, this is a graph that shows uh, that, yes, uh, um, the female fertility goes down quite um, uh, rapidly after 35. And obviously, we know that um, uh, uh, around age 50, uh, it's for us um, the moment of uh, arrest of, uh, for reproduction, right? Uh, the menopause uh, is, it sometimes happens in a very short time. Uh, but I want to show you that actually also male fertility uh, declines with age, although much more slowly. And uh, um, uh, for men, it's a different issue, okay? So uh, fertility varies from men to men. Age does not predict male fertility in the same way that it does for female fertility. Um, also, um, uh, prostate function, for instance, does not not affect fertility. A man can father children even if his prostate is removed. Um, and some uh, fairly old men uh, can and do uh, father children. So, um, you know, 
the decline in fertility in men is so slow and anyways, um, people, men aged um, even 70, 80 years old are able to, uh, to father children. But to uh, understand uh, this concept of fertility, um, uh, obviously we need to understand how uh, the, the gametes uh, work, so the basic biology and the anatomy uh, of reproduction. So uh, gametes are needed for sexual reproduction, um, and these are uh, the, the sperm, the spermatozoan, the, the male gamete, and the ovum, the female gamete. Uh, these are uh, germ cells and uh, uh, contain an haploid set of chromosomes, so half uh, sets of chromosomes compared to uh, in, uh, the cells in a um, developed individual. So um, fertilization uh, produced one cell with one set of chromosomes from each parent. Okay? So um, these cells are produced by gonads that in the male are the testes, in the uh, females are uh, the ovaries, and uh, uh, together with the gonads, uh, we have reproductive systems that include not just the gonads, but ducts, glands, and supporting structures uh, that um, uh, will produce hormones and will nourish uh, the um, development of the gametes. And uh, just a point uh, of, uh, to be precise, gynecology is the study of the female reproductive system, whereas the male reproductive system is studied by urology, which includes also the study of the um, urinary system that in the male uh, um, share uh, uh, features with the, um, with the reproductive system. So this is, uh, um, uh, to give you an idea of the male reproductive system, this is actually a slide that shows show to my students in the anatomy lectures, and uh, I'm not going to go into all the details that I expect my students to know, but I just want to show uh, that um, we have uh, the gonads here, the testes uh, where the sperm is uh, generated, uh, and then we have a series of ducts that takes the, the, the sperm in, uh, through uh, other structures uh, like the seminal vesicles, the prostate gland, the bulbo-urethral bulbo gland, and then uh, the um, semen gets enriched with fluid from these glands and uh, gets ejaculated via the urethra. So the urethra is the common passageway for sperm and urine. So, um, it's, uh, um, so it's not just the, sp the sperm itself, so the, the, the sperm cells that are important, but uh, also these other uh, components that uh, um, contribute to the formation of the semen. And uh, uh, these confer uh, characteristics that are important, such as uh, um, uh, alkalinity, so uh, the, the um, uh, pH of the uh, semen, uh, fluidity and, and viscosity, and so on and so forth. So uh, the sperm is formed in uh, uh, seminiferous tubules uh, within the testes, and uh, as you can see from this, uh, um, this is a, a, a section of a testis uh, in a drawing. And this is what we can see at the microscope if we have a section uh, through a, a seminiferous tubules. And as you can see, this is actually a drawing that represents the same thing. We have all the different um, spermatogonia, which are the progenitor of the mature sp uh, sperm cells, that are in different stages of development until then they gain the flagellum, which is the tail, as you can see. So here are the primordial uh, um, uh, sperm, so spermatogonium. Uh, this, uh, at this stage, they still have uh, two sets of chromosomes, and then they uh, divide and they uh, differentiate, they, they uh, develop into um, uh, mature sperm. And at this stage, then they are ready to leave the seminiferous tubules and, and uh, uh, go into um, the, the ducts, okay? So all these um, um, uh, stages of uh, um, development, maturation, are um, in, in, in a male uh, take less than three months, okay? On average, about 72 days. 
So keep this in mind when we compare it with what happens in the, in the female body. So uh, once it's mature, the, uh, this is how the sperm look. Uh, uh, it's got a head, a, a middle piece, and a tail. The head has got an acrosome that is like a helmet and uh, uh, contains enzymes that are important uh, and, and needed to break the, the egg membrane, so pen, to penetrate the, the egg. And the middle piece is full of mitochondria because uh, we need ATP, a lot of energy for the uh, sperm to move. And obviously the tail uh, is the flagellum that uh, helps the, um, make the, the sperm swim towards uh, the egg. And um, uh, the, the um, sperm cells are produced at the rate of about 300 million per day. Again, keep in mind this number when you compare it with the production of the uh, female um, uh, gametes. And uh, once ejaculated, have a life expectancy of about uh, 48 hours in the female reproductive uh, tract. And this is how uh, a sperm move. Uh, in, sem in, in the semen, the sperm uh, can swim in a straight line, but then in the female uh, environment, um, the, the movement is uh, uh, more varied, and uh, um, in the uh, mucus of a uh, woman's cervix, this movement can, uh, can uh, move in a different way. Until uh, all these movements help the uh, sperm swim until uh, it meets uh, the egg. And uh, one factor that can impact fertility in the, in the male is the capability of the sperm to move in the right direction and to move fast and to move in the uh, female environment that is acidic. Okay, so in some circumstances, the uh, female uh, environment is too acidic, so this can impact on the movement of the sperm, and uh, again, in, on fertility overall. So, um, to summarize, uh, aging uh, changes in the male reproductive system may include changes in the, in, in the testicular tissue, in the sperm production, in the uh, erectile function, but these changes usually occur gradually and slowly. Um, the uh, tubes that carry sperm may become less elastic. Uh, that means that the testes uh, will continue to produce sperm, but the rate of uh, sperm cell production uh, slows down. Uh, the epididymis, the seminal vesicle and prostate gland lose some of their uh, surface cells, but they continue to produce the fluid that helps carry the sperm. So all the basic functions are maintained, they are just slowed down. So as the male fertility declines with age, but it doesn't really stop um, uh, per se. So um, also the volume of the um, fluid ejaculated uh, usually remain the same, but uh, there are fewer um, living sperm in it. So this is another factor that, um, that um, can impact fertility. But remember, you know, you need just a very good swimmer. Yeah, so it's, it's all relative. And uh, uh, if we look at the female reproductive system, this is uh, uh, again another picture that I showed uh, to my uh, students in anatomy. Uh, you have uh, the ovaries that are um, the, the female gonads where the um, uh, gametes are produced. And then you have the uterine tubes, the, uh, the uterus, uh, that ends with the cervical canal, and then we have the um, vagina and the external genitalia that constitute the vulva. Now, the um, uh, mature uh, oocytes gets uh, ovulated, so gets uh, expelled by the ovaries, and gets um, absorbed by the fimbria of the uterine tube. So you imagine it's like a vacuum cleaner, that sucks in the eggs from the ovary. And fertilization happens here, yeah? Not here, not here, it happens here. And sometimes it is possible that uh, the fertilization happens here, 
And uh, this is quite risky because um, it gives a rise of ectopic, uh, to ectopic pregnancies. And when this happens, unfortunately, there is nothing uh, that uh, you can do to save the embryo. The embryo can actually grow, but in a, an ectopic way, so outside of the womb where it is supposed, supposed to implant, and can actually ad adhere to, uh, um, the, um, uh, to tissues that are not supposed to be um, uh, the tissue to support uh, the development of the fetus. And uh, uh, importantly, it can um, impair, uh, you know, it is a, a risk uh, to the woman's life. Uh, so there is uh, nothing else to do but remove it surgically. Okay? But anyways, in normal circumstances, then the, the, the uh, fertilization occurs here, and then the um, uh, embryo will travel uh, to the uterus where it will get implanted. So all this is going to be explained uh, better uh, and in more detail by uh, Joe in the next lecture. Uh, what I want to show in this uh, um, image is that uh, all these processes are accompanied by uh, a fine regulation of hormones. Okay? So there is an interplay of different hormones that happen to be increasing or decreasing at the right time of the uh, reproductive cycle in the female uh, body. So for instance here uh, we have uh, the follicle stimulating hormone that is supposed to uh, stimulate the formation of follicle where in the ovary uh, where the uh, oocytes uh, uh, reside. Okay, so with the um, uh, with this hormone, the follicle will get um, to maturity and uh, until ovulation where uh, it is going to be expelled from the, um, uh, from the ovaries. Uh, it's very important also the luteinizing hormone that uh, indicates um, a high peak of uh, LH, um, indicates uh, the highest moment of fertility because it's also, um, uh, it, it, it indicates that ovulation is going to happen uh, soon uh, when ovulation is um, uh, by definition around the 14th days and uh, the whole um, reproductive cycle is considered 28 days, obviously plus or minus, depending on the individuals. Then we have uh, estrogens that support uh, the um, uh, growth of uh, healthy eggs and uh, um, uh, uh, until before ovulation. And then the progesterone kicks in after uh, ovulation. And uh, if uh, um, a fertilization occurs, the levels of progesterone stay high, right? Because progesterone is the, the hormone that is supposed to uh, protect uh, and uh, nourish uh, pregnancy. If uh, fertilization is not happening, that the level of progesterone will go down and the um, uh, menstruation will happen again. And then the cycle uh, starts uh, again. Uh, so to these changes of hormones, uh, we have in correspondence changes of, uh, uh, in the ovary. So as we can see at the beginning of the uh, um, uh, reproductive cycle, we have primordial follicles that are um, uh, pushed to uh, uh, develop into secondary follicle. Then we have the mature uh, follicle here, and then the evolution, uh, uh, ovulation occurs. Uh, at the same time, we have changes in the uh, uterine um, endometrium that uh, obviously become more and more uh, prepared to welcome the uh, uh, fertilized egg. Okay? And in absence of fertilized eggs, then uh, the endometrium is shed in what we know uh, is the menstruation. Also, around the 14th day, uh, of the reproductive cycle in, co in correspondence to the uh, ovulation, um, we, um, uh, there is a, a production of mucus that is uh, less thick than uh, usual. And this uh, thin mucus is supposed to welcome the sperm and uh, facilitate um, the, um, the travel of the sperm towards the uh, fallopian tube. Uh, from the um, vagina and the uh, cervical uh, canal. So um, 
the oogenesis, um, so the formation of, uh, um, of uh, oocytes, of uh, eggs, uh, is uh, um, happening before birth, okay? During fetal development. At birth, uh, females are born with approximately one million of eggs, and we don't get any more. Okay, this is what we uh, come provided with. But by the time of puberty, only about 300,000 uh, remain. So how does that compare with the 300 million of sperm that are produced per day uh, in, a, in a male? Um, of these, uh, only 300, 400 will be ovulated during a woman's uh, reproductive uh, lifetime. So um, fertility can drop as a woman ages due to decreasing number and quality of eggs. So not just the number, but quality of eggs as well. And this is interesting to see that actually in this slide here, uh, uh, you have um, an idea of uh, what we call the ovarian reserve. So in uh, a, a female um, aged uh, less than 35 years, you see uh, that, um, uh, you know, the, an abundance of uh, uh, oocytes in the, uh, in the ovary, whereas over 35 years, the um, ovarian reserve uh, uh, start becoming uh, depleted. And in correspondence to the um, presence of less uh, in number, uh, less uh, oocytes, we have a decrease of, uh, uh, of a hormone called the anti-mullerian hormone. Uh, so um, fertility can be measured uh, by looking at uh, uh, counting at the number of follicles present uh, in, uh, um, uh, in the ovary. Uh, as well, and this can be done uh, by ultrasound and also via uh, a blood sample by measuring the presence of uh, the quantity of this um, hormone. So uh, if we compare spermatogenesis with oogenesis, uh, we see that uh, in spermatogenesis we have a um, spermatogonial stem cells that, is, that has got a deployed uh, set of chromosomes, and then uh, uh, every um, uh, 72 days uh, we have this cycle that is continuous. So at the end you will have a set of divisions, some of which are um, uh, reductional, so you have a reduction in the number of, of chromosomes. And at the end, each spermatogonium will produce four uh, sperm cells. Whereas the oogenesis is a little bit complica more complicated. So we have a primordial uh, germ cells, the oogonium, then uh, uh, you have uh, 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 in the embryonic life, so si still before birth, uh, there are a number of divisions within uh, um, fetal life, and uh, uh, at birth, um, uh, females are um, uh, uh, left with uh, um, oocytes that still need to complete their division, okay? And the division of the secondary oocytes only happens after fertilization, okay? So after uh, the, the oocyte is... Um, uh, fertilized, the, um, uh, the cell can divide once more and will generate two daughter cells. One is a polar body that um, uh, will degenerate and the, uh, the other one is the fertilized egg that will go, um, will encounter further division to become a, an embryo. So, uh, what happens if the, um, later in, in the fertile uh, life of, uh, of a woman? Uh, because the, um, the, uh, the primary uh, oocytes are um, uh, staying in, in a state of waiting to be uh, divided, and uh, um, they divide only after fertilization, we have a situation where the, the spindle fibers are uh, not... Um, uh, um, very efficient anymore. And what happened, sometimes the chromosomes that uh, need to divide into the two daughter cells uh, are not segregated equally. And uh, this is the case when you have, for instance, the presence of an extra chromosome in, uh, um, 
in uh, a developing uh, zygote, okay, so in, in an embryo. And this is the classical example of uh, uh, trisomy 10, 21 that um, is also uh, known as Down syndrome. Um, so we know that uh, Down syndrome babies are vital, they can reach adult life, but there are other uh, uh, trisomies that are not vital. And uh, that is why also in, uh, um, in a um, uh, female, in a woman over 35 or, uh, years of age, it's, uh, um, the, the frequency of miscarriage is, is higher, okay? Because uh, mistakes in the uh, segregation of the chromosomes happen and uh, sometime uh, very early in pregnancy, um, these embryos are not vital and uh, they result in miscarriage. So this is uh, just a, um, to summarize this, the, the, the situation. The um, uh, maternal age has uh, um, an impact on both a reduction of the, on the, of the ovarian reserve and of the oocyte competence, we say. Okay, so there is also lower, lower energy production um, and uh, this lower energy production is seen in the way uh, uh, the, the, the spindle, uh, the mitotic spindle works and uh, um, that's why the higher frequency of chromosomal, uh, chromosomal missegregation. So um, uh, ultimately, all these mechanisms uh, influence, uh, uh, have an impact of fertility and cause a decreased um, fertility in, in, in the female. So, um, to cut a long, long story short, we, there is something we can do to improve um, uh, the health uh, of, um, of uh, uh, our reproductive system and uh, the health of the, of the gametes. Uh, even in uh, uh, not very young age. And there are a number of uh, supplements uh, that can be taken. Folic acid, everybody knows that uh, uh, people who are um, uh, seeking a, a pregnancy usually take folic acid uh, before, um, before um, hand. Uh, but also uh, folic acid needs to be taken together with other vitamins uh, of the B complex because otherwise it doesn't really work very well on its own. Uh, inositol um, uh, supports uh, proper hormone balance, ovarian function. Um, uh, CoQ10 is important for energy, right? So we said we need energy for the ovaries to produce healthy eggs. Vitamin D, I think uh, Professor Harvey will expand on, uh, on the vitamins in her talk, so I'm not going to um, uh, prolong uh, this conversation. But in general, uh, together with all these um, uh, elements that we need to include in our diet, we need a generally healthy uh, diet and healthy behavior, so we need to be active and uh, we need to make sure that we have all the nutrients that are um, meant su to support um, healthy uh, gamete production and a healthy um, uh, embryo. So that is it from me.